broadcast so <clears throat> when I apply my gloss <laughs> girl thank you child hey Dr. Smith hey Prophet Jones I'll take hey Gina Jesus for mine good morning I'll take Jesus for mine oh you can have my scalp is itching y'all this whole wide world, but I'll take Jesus for mine. Hallelujah, I'll take Jesus for mine. Good morning, I'll take Jesus for mine. Oh, you can have this whole wide world, but I'll take Jesus for for mine. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Rashida Monique. I'm here with the Daily Shift broadcast Monday through Friday between the 7 a.m. 7.30 hour Eastern Standard Time to delve into the Word of God to help you shift into your proper place to put you on the uh, play on the way of traject your, the correct trajectory, sorry, to become all that God has created you to be in this season. And today, according to the shift protocol, we're talking about focus. And as I was listening to the prayer on this morning on the prayer line, I think it's, what prayer line was I listening to, y'all? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if it has a name, if she has a name, but missionary evangelist Pew's print line. Um, mother, um, Charles, evangelist Charles was praying about compromise. Lord, help us not to compromise. And that did something to my spirit, right? And so I started looking up compromise. And so, and when you go to 1 Corinthians 10, and Paul is talking about, you know, God has made a way of escape for us, which I hadn't even realized. But in the first part of that chapter, in chapter 10, he was talking about mixing the religions. And um, in the commentary I was reading, I didn't study all this out, but I'm sharing this because it really touched my spirit. And it's something I'm going to look into further according to the word of God. He was referring to what Paul was referring to was when the children of Israel, which is what I'm reading um, in my Bible in the year, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt and they were um, on the other side of the Red Sea and Moses was on the mountain and he uh, was talking to God and he just took a little long according to the people that were waiting and they began to build idol gods even after they saw and experienced the power and the might of the true and the living God, good morning brown skin lady, uh, in their lives that they quickly turned around and started worshiping other gods. And so uh, the commentary said that it was what they call syncretism, right? Where you began to take your religion and to take those values and those thoughts and apply other values and thoughts from other um people uh, uh other thinkers or other religions and try to put them side to side and so because you so because you keep them so close you don't even see the fact that you've taken your eyes off of god and started looking at something else you you start taking your eyes off of god off of jesus christ and, and putting it on something else because it's something that you've never disconnected from, right? And so that's how we got the idol worship from these chosen people of God that knew God in a way that other people did not. And they set him aside and went and started to worship these idols, not even just worship another God. They created a, 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 an idol God to worship. And so... 
I was like, Lord, we have done that in our lives, right? We've created these idols, our careers. Not to say that you shouldn't be ambitious, but our careers have become our idols. Our families, our spouses, our children, our government, our money, our, the things we are able to make and create. We worship the created and forget to worship the creator, right? Because everything that we're able to create and make was given to us by God in an idea. So God is the creator, right? So as we uh, walk in our life, today is our focus, right? Focus on Jesus Christ. Be very aware of those things that we walk close to that are not quite biblical and they seem okay, but it comes uh it, it sort of seems like it has the same principle. One thing I don't, one word I don't use is karma, right? God doesn't use karma. It's a principle of sowing and reaping according to the word of God. So I don't use the word karma because I worship Jesus Christ. I'm not, I believe it's a Buddhist term. Um, and so sometimes we, because they sort of mean the same thing and culturally we interchange different words, but our words have life and power. And when you're so used to intertwining what Jesus has done with all these other things, it's just a small step. It's not even a big leap. You wonder how people can go from being, going from being a Christian to being, uh, put into a cult, you know, believing that this one man, uh, is, it can sleep with all the women, right? And control all the women and the children and all the men rocking around with guns. And we've all made this suicide pact. And you're trying to figure out how in the world did they ever get over here? But when we don't know the word of God, when we don't uh, live by the word of God, when it's not the final authority in our lives, we begin to make small compromises and small changes. And these things take us off of our course. So, uh, so... <laughs> Today's broadcast is about keeping your focus. You, This is a Christian broadcast, okay? I don't care if you're from another religion and you come over here and watch the broadcast. You are more than welcome, right? But I'm not going to sit here and tell you to put something in the universe. I'm not going to sit here and tell you uh, some kind of Buddhist proverb or some kind of proverbs of some other religion. I'm not going to tell you that, yeah... This is right and that is right. Why? Because I believe the whole Bible. And the Bible says that there's only one way to God and it's through Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm teaching over here. So as I teach this focus on today, <laughs> I'm teaching that we are focused on Jesus Christ. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? I believe in the Trinity. God... The Word, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus became flesh, and he dwelt among us. And he is our example, right? He is our example. The Holy Spirit came when Jesus gave his life, went to, to preach to the dead and those that were captive in hell, and then he rose again. And he ascended up to the right hand of the Father, Right. And then the Holy Spirit came down to dwell within us. See, before Jesus did that, the power of God moved upon the people, but he didn't dwell within. It had to be their their will. They had to try to work this thing out in their own in their flesh. But we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And so when we become in tune, when we fast and pray and tune our spirit to listen to God and to have our heart in tune to the heart of God and we are sensitive to the move of the spirit, he will show us those ways where we are making compromises. But the one thing about us being created with our own free will, what God has caused us to have an autonomy is that we can override the Holy Spirit. Because he's that still small voice and he says, say, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And you're like, no, I'm going to do this. Um, It's okay. It's a good thing. And you reason as to why you're going on this way. And then you find yourself in trouble. So today I'm just calling you back, sis, brother, friend, homie. <laughs> Go way back. Home slice. Come back. Focus on God. Keep your eye. Um, he said, "I press to the to the I press towards the mark of the and the prize of the high caller, which is in Christ Jesus." Home skillet, right? Come back. Press toward the mark of Jesus Christ. I like the way when Paul was writing a lot of he's put everything back to Christ Jesus. 
into Christ Jesus, by Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus. Come on. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So I'm just here to help you and me to focus. To help you and me. La, 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 get your mind right. La, 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 get your mind right. La, 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 la. Yeah. We are to get our minds right. There's a lot of mixing, right? Um, there's a lot of compromises. Well, I can do this and still be saved. But when the Lord says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. When you love something that deep, you begin to act like them. You begin to uh, obey or serve them. Right? When you love your husband, you don't go just go buy dinner and come home and eat. You be like, I'm stopping to get something to eat. You want some? When you get married and you love your wife, you be like, look, um, I'm about to go take my car to the shop. If you now have nothing to do when I come back, I'm going to take yours. You know, or meet me at the shop and I'm going to get both of our oils changed. You know, something like that. You know, we serve one another. But we do a lot of lip service about how we love God and we serve God and we believe God and we believe in Jesus. But we don't have any fruit. We don't have no fruit to show that we love Jesus. But we're quick to say, don't judge me, honey. I ain't judging. I'm just looking at your fruit. Your basket empty. You told you you told the Lord you loved him, but your basket is empty. So our job today on Thursday, this Thursday, October the 15th, 2020. The Lord's year 2020. This is a wonderful day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Right? We will focus on the Lord. Lord, we praise and we thank you on this day. We thank you for focus. God, we thank you for teaching us not to compromise, to stand wholeheartedly on your word. That your word is the last, author- last uh, um, has the last word in our lives. That it has authority over every area of our lives. So we consult your word day and night. God, that we even go by your word that says, I hide, have hidden your word in my heart that I will not sin against you though. That we will write it upon the tables. That we will write it on our walls, God, that we put it on our foreheads and we would keep it on our post that we were hanging around our neck, God, that your word will forever not just be on us, but be in us. And it will be the thing that we speak, that we will stop speaking others thoughts and others philosophies and others ways of living and others unbiblical holiness and unbiblical righteousness. And God, that we will live according to your spirit, that we will live according to your word. God, that your word will be made manifest in us. God, that the word we will hide in our hearts, that we will not sin against you. And we will not sin against our body, that we will not sin against our brother and sister, that we will love, love like you called us to love, that we will live how you have called us to live, that we will create how you have called us to create and how we will be how you've created us to be. And so God, keep us in this season. Forgive us for compromising and God, keep us in this season where there's great compromise in the earth. God, but help us to show, show us your way, be a light unto us be a light uh a light to our pathway and a lamp to our feet god that we won't walk in wrong places that we won't dwell in the seat of sinners and walk amongst the scornful god but we will fellowship with those that love you that we will find ourselves god being filled by those that's able to sharpen us with their iron and god we glorify you on today we magnify you, God, and we give you praise because you are worthy. Lord, we praise and thank you for these that are here and watching the replay. God, we ask you to meet them where they are. Lord, we ask you to continue to heal in their bodies, oh God. Lord, continue to touch uh, Prophet G as she recovers from the car accident. God, touch now and set free and deliver as only you can. And God, we glorify you on today. We magnify you and we give you praise. You are a healer. God, we thank you for those that have been prayed for, that are are recuperating, those that have been healed, those that have been delivered, those that have been reclaimed, those that have been saved. God, we thank you for the testimony of the saints. And God, we just thank you for your power that dwells within. God, and we ask you to meet us, oh God, at the point of our need on today. We thank you for your omnipresent spirit that goes everywhere at the same time. So we thank you for blessing each and every household 
load. God, that you're covering all of us with your blood in this season. And God, we give you glory today. Lord, we give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So I thank you all for being here. Thank you all for joining. Go ahead. If you have not invited somebody, if you have not shared, feel free. If you're watching the replay, thank you so much for watching the replay and up until this point of time. I appreciate you. I invite you to come back tomorrow between the 7, 7 a.m. and 7.30, um, our Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow is our triumph of the day. It's the day that we celebrate. It's Friday. You know, Friday is usually the party day, but we're celebrating the things that God has done in us on this week. Some You may not feel like he's done much, but it's all praiseworthy because God can take a little and make much of it. Amen. And so I appreciate you for being here. I do want you to know that you are blessed. You are highly favored. You are the apple of your father's eye. He is absolutely and positively concerned about you. He thinks that you are the best thing since sliced bread. You can cast your cares on him and know that God cares for you and that he loves you with an everlasting love and there's nothing and there's no thing you could do about it you all have a wonderful and a blessed day and lord willing i'll see you all back here on tomorrow good have a good day